So you were in the video for Tupac's How Do You Want It? Yes. What, and, and it wasn't just you, it was you, Nina Hartley, mm -hmm. Angel Kelly? Angel Kelly. Okay. Me, Nina Hartley, Angel Kelly. Um, God, it was such a blur, it was so long ago. <laughs> Those are all the people I remember. <laughs> you know, it was amazing. <laughs> okay, and this was, you know, when Tupac was with Death Row. Right. At his height, mm -hmm. pretty much. You know, uh, this was off uh, all eyes on me. Right. So, how did you and the other girls get in that video? So funny, uh, you know, I all these years I really don't talk much about Tupac. I mean, that was a dear friend of mine. It, I get kind of, you know, it's happening again. <laughs> I get kind of choked up. Um, I could at least say because I'm such a private person, you know what I mean. Um, I could at least say that. He, he, he contacted me and he wanted me to be in his video. You know what I mean? He was like, please come out to LA. You know, he really wanted me to come back to LA for good because I was back in New York. And um, he had all these, these dreams, the things that he was planning to do, you know? And knowing, you know, if you know Pac, he can inspire you to, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So I was like, okay, I'll come out of, because I was, really wasn't doing much. So I was like, okay, I'll come do the music video. And when I got there, then I found out Nina, Angel, and everybody else was part of it. Ron Hightower was actually directing it. Um, it went from a clean video to like, okay, let's turn this into X-rated, <laughs> you know? So it happened right there on the spot. So everything was happening so spontaneously. You know, of course he, to me, he was the highest paid. That was the highest paid um, man that paid us, you know, in music video history at that time. Yeah. I mean, he really, he tripled our salary that, you remember, at that moment. Do you remember how much you got paid? I, I'm then? not going to say. <laughs> it was nice, though. I'm not going <laughs> to say. But it was incredible. All I remember was a lot of um, champagne, and it was just like a fantasy. It was, it was really everything that you could imagine, at least the things that I create you know, on my everyday, you know, fantasies, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. It's, it was, it was amazing. Right, and, and Jodeci is on that song also, Yes, right? yes. Yeah, they, they did the hook. Uh -huh. Okay, Casey and Jojo. Casey and Jojo was there, mm -hmm. right. So, you guys do the video, mm -hmm. and originally it was supposed to be just a regular video, and then it turns into an X-rated, well, I guess an R-rated. 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 Yeah, it turns it into R-rated. Yeah. Sex, <laughs> uh, going on. Uh -uh. Um, there was an interview with uh, Nina Hartley. Right. Well, I guess an interview or a statement or something like mm -hmm. that. And she said, uh, the best part of doing um, the How, How Do You Want It video was the private party I had with Tupac, Heather, and Angel Kelly after the last day of shooting. Yeah, it was a nice party. <laughs> but you know, I, back to, you know, everybody who was there, I always tell, you know, people tell their stories, you know what I mean? Just like Nina expressed her story, her experience, and Angel expressed her experience the way they did. You know, my experience is something I, I hold sacred. I, you know, I, it's, he was really a, a close, dear person to me. So, you know, just like anybody I hold close and dear, I respect things, at least to me, that was sacred. You gotta hold on to something, I keep saying it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the party, all I, I really couldn't, once again, express that the party was amazing. The after party was incredible, you know? Okay. Um, and it inspired me to move back to LA. He, he inspired me to come back to LA. Oh, so after that video, you moved back to LA? Yeah. So and I moved back to LA. And then he, um, I think three or four months later, he passed away. Yeah. You and Tupac were romantic? Um, I would say more like a spiritual, it was everything, you know what I mean? I can't, you know, don't let me go there. <laughs> Every time I talk about him, I get choked up. I just feel like he, he really put himself into this hole that he couldn't get out of, you know? So I really feel like he was misunderstood. A hole that he couldn't get out of, meaning what, when he signed a death row or? Just, you know, I think back to being entertainer, you have this image that you have to be something more than really that you are. You know, when you close your door, you go home. You, people don't see that person. And I think that was the, 
part that people really need to see about him. Yeah, I mean, he, when you talk about the greatest rappers of all time, mm -hmm. you know, some people will say Biggie, but most people end up saying Tupac. Right. And, and Biggie was amazing in his own right, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. Um, but I think that what, what Tupac had that, that Biggie didn't have is like the thing that Bob Marley had, which mm -hmm. was the, the social message right. to go along and, and just the actual, you know, like actually caring about what happens to, you know, the group of people that he represents and, yeah. and, and the society and, and everything else like that. You know, and I, I interviewed, um, you know, Kamani Marley, mm -hmm. and he agreed, you know, he felt that Tupac was sort of, you know, the closest thing to Bob Marley, to his father, in terms of what he put out in the world. Right. You know, and you just, like, you don't see, you, didn't really, you haven't really seen that since, not in the hip-hop world, at least. No, it's really hard, you know, but at the same time, it's like the hip-hop, you know, it's, you have this, back to that image, it's the image you have to, it comes with hip-hop, you know. I don't care how much of your heart is gold, you know, you gotta put this bulletproof vest on. It's just what it is. If you don't, it's yeah. a visible one, but you gotta put it on, you know, if you wanna um, be out into that street and survive in that game, you know, because that game, it brings a lot of different elements into it, you know? So, yeah, when it literally, it, to this day, when I talk about Pac, it's, it's very hard for me. Uh, how did you, like, what did you go through when you first heard about the murder? Um. It was, it was more like, you know, it, everything stops, you know, when, you know, time stops when people that you care about pass away, you know, um, just like today, uh, you know, after this, I have to go to Big Cap's funeral. It's a dear friend of mine. Oh, that's today? Yesterday. So I leave here to go to his funeral. That, that was my friend too. Yeah, he, he's, you know, Awful. and people don't know that, you know, people are like, how do you friends with Cap? But people don't understand. It's just... It's just life, you know, so, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard to even continue with Tupac. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a great loss. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, but he's still here. He really is, to at least affect me and other people that really cared and he loved, you know, he's still here. Yeah, and, you know, you, you, you can't really turn on the radio oh, for no. too long without hearing him. Oh, no, no. And, uh, no, I think at my funeral they're gonna be playing. How do you want it? <laughs> they're actually working on the movie right now. Oh wow! Yeah, I know about the movie. Yeah. Very, you know, John Singleton was. Uh, that's, a, that's a dear friend of mine. He was actually directing. Was gonna direct that, but yeah. I think he pulled out of yeah. it. Yeah, you know? uh, Benny Boom yeah. is directing it now, and LT Hutton is yeah. the uh, one of the executive producers yeah. of it. You know, me and him talked uh, recently. Yeah, my whole thing is like, I'm just glad someone's telling the story. You know, but I think the story should be told in so many ways, you know, I really hope that John puts his out, you know. I think, you know, just like there's so many stories on every other legend that's out there, I think we should have more Tupac movies, you know, represent his story, yeah. you know, in different ways, I mean, really, besides documentaries, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, hip-hop, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, absolutely. Yeah. It's the music industry, it's just, as entertainers, it's really a, it's a hard game, you know. That's why I kind of respect, um, there's people that I actually respect out there, you know. Um, when you look at uh, Kanye West, you look at Kim Kardashian, you know, you, like I said, you have to be bulletproof. You know what I mean? You get out here in this game, it's not about what you, what the people feel, it's about what you want to put out and it doesn't matter what they say. You know what I mean? It can't affect you. Mm -hmm. It really can't. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you know who you are. So, you know, and that's how I lived my whole life. And it, it's, it's worked for me, you know. And I, I'm very successful as minding my own business. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at that. <laughs> but I wish you'd stop. I like Meek Mill, man. Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to... I work. wish you'd stop. Listen, I liked Meek Mill. But all of this shit is making you look bad, homie. Saying you used to want to be 
signed to Rockefeller, but then he turned into Jay. Oh, yeah. I understand what he's saying, but you got to understand how that could be took. Yeah, you're taking a shot at Jay-Z. I mean, it, it, you could be taking a light you're shot take, at Jay. You're, you're taking and, a shot at Jay-Z. And, and hip-hop be like, nah, bro, you ain't Jay. Yeah. You're Drake, which is fine. 